Hi, my name is Denise Chowdhury. I'm an artist and designer living and working in Lafayette and I'm a graduate of the Rhode Island School of Design. I'm a figure artist and I am passionate about figure drawing and human anatomy and I believe that figure drawing is a really important foundation for all visual artists. On February 5th, I'll be teaching a workshop for the Louisville Arts Association along with my associate professor, Dr. Bones. The workshop that we'll be teaching is an anatomy primer for artists, but I like to call the workshop the power of x-ray vision. I call the workshop the power of x-ray vision because as artists, we represent what it is that we see. But as a figure artist, I find it vital to understand the inside workings, the, the structure that makes us up as humans. I find myself relying on my understanding of anatomy to build really confident and accurate figure drawings. In this workshop, you'll have the opportunity to draw from a live human model. We'll spend three hours drawing the figure after we've spent some time studying the skeleton and the muscular systems. We'll be looking at the bones and bony structures that make up the, the skeleton that are important to us as artists and primarily those that are vis visible from the exterior of the body. We'll really be taking a strong look at the rib cage, the relationship between the rib cage, the pelvis, and the spine, and how those three systems work together to create a strong foundation, not only for the body, but for our drawings as well. We'll also be studying the muscular system and how our muscles interact with the skeleton and each other, intertwining with each other, and again, how those are visible and representable from the exterior of the body. Uh, we'll be looking for visible anatomical landmarks and we'll be talking about what that means. We will be talking a lot about the canons of human proportion. The body can be divided into eight separate sections, eight equal sections based on that head size. We'll be studying how those proportions work and how to represent them throughout the workshop. I'll be teaching you how to use sighting and measuring to measure the human proportions as well as to when those proportion rules are broken due to foreshortening. So we'll use sighting and measuring to measure out equal proportions and then also to measure and identify difficult proportions in difficult poses that are foreshortened. So we're going to be looking at alignments. We'll be using horizontal and plumb lines to set up our accurate positioning of all of our anatomical parts, hands and extremities, feet, what the relationship is, distance to each other. Um, we'll be using the, the concept, the really simple concept of the grid that you might have done when you were kids. And we'll talk about that in the workshop as well. In the end, we'll be using observation, skillful, really careful, skillful observation to identify and see subtleties, both internal and external, and represent those as accurately as possible. Our goal is to create an expressive drawing that's also technically accurate and proportionally correct. We want to represent mass and structure, balance, but most important, we want overall validity to our drawing so the figure looks and feels like a real person. I'm going to do a demo now um, using um, Russell as my model. And I'm going to show you some of what I'm talking about uh, as I draw through Russell's pose. I'm going to be looking specifically for the, the definition of the, of the spine. And although our model's pose will be facing me forward, I'm going to be using my x-ray vision to talk about how I can see the spine through the body and how I can identify where it is and what its gesture is doing. Uh, additionally, the uh, relationship between the uh, rib cage and the pelvis and how they are related to the spine. So in very quick terms, um, very quickly, if we think of the rib cage here as somewhat of an egg and the spine is running through that and then we have sort of the butterfly shape of the pelvis, these two masses, so in between here, we have a soft bit. So it's a hard bit with a space and a hard bit. And what we're going to see is a compression on one side and an extension on the other. So we're really going to look at how the relationship of one mass relates to the other and what happens to the spine between them. Okay. All of the limbs are um, going to be derivative off of this setup. And then the third, I would say that the fourth most important thing then would be the skull on top of that and how that um, 
action happens. Um, so we'll be looking, and I, we'll be identifying specific anatomical landmarks as we move through this. We're going to take a look at our model Russell, who I am going to be drawing um, today, and I'm going to get started. So. When I set up for a figure drawing, again, I'm using my power of x-ray vision to look at my model and to set up, first of all, a gesture line. We, uh, a lot of times in gesture, we'll call this a line of action. To me, that line of action is primarily the, the line of the spine and how it runs through the body, down through the weight-bearing uh, lower limb, which would be the leg. In this case, we're looking at Russell's left leg is his weight-bearing leg. Russell is um, specifically standing in a very traditional uh, pose. The masters drew it all the time. It's called contraposto. And the reason that he's standing this way is because it sets us up for a very clear, definitive um, pelvis. You can see his hand is on his, the top of his pelvis. We'll talk more about that. And it gives the pelvis a tip that we can use to um, look at the mass, the, the, the differences between the alignment of the rib cage and the pelvis. I'm going to look for specific landmarks that help me to identify his spine. Now, obviously through the center of the skull, even though his head is turned, the center of the skull terminating at the seventh cranial um, vertebrae, which is the big one in the back of our neck, we'll talk more about this in the workshop, um, which is right behind his sternal notch, which is this anatomical landmark, it's very clear. We can see his sternocleidomastoid, which is the muscle in his neck on his right. Then at the, the center point of his nipples, right on his sternum, right behind there is the spine. And then of course, as we come down through the abdomen and into the pelvis. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. The other main defining structure here is going to be the um, shoulder line and the tip of the shoulder line. So I may use my ability to um, kind of eyeball that. And because he's contraposto, it's typical that the shoulder tip is in juxtaposition. And we'll okay, talk. so let's set up with a gesture line from the, so this is through the head down into the neck here. And then I can see the spine in the back with my x-ray vision doing something along this line down to the pelvis, to the supporting leg. And this would be the other leg here, kneecap. And you can see that I'm really just roughing it in. I'm not getting caught up in proportion and I'm not um, getting too specific. So I start my drawings very much in this way even when I'm not teaching. You can see here now I have a representation of head, uh, rib cage, pelvis, and I'm trying very hard to use very keen observation to stack those appropriately. So his neck, which is here, right, into the shoulder, which is dropping on the left, the alignment for things like the hand is re relative to his head. And because you're looking at this in video, it might make it even easier to see. And keep in mind that my perspective and the camera's perspective might be slightly different here, but I am looking at the relationship in a flat plane. So I'm flattening the plane. We'll talk a lot more about that in the workshop. Um, mentally flattening the plane, which you're seeing a flattened plane because you're looking at a video of the relationship horizontally and vertically of where his hand is to his head. So from where I'm sitting, his hand and his ear are in alignment. The reason that Russell's comfortable putting his hand on that bot, his body in that spot is because there's a little shelf for his hand to um, sit on. And as a result, I know that that's the tip of his iliac crest, which is right here, right where that finger, that extended finger is sitting on that anatomy. Okay. So although I can't see it, again, I can use my x-ray vision and my knowledge of what is happening with his 
body, his bone structure to know that that's why it's comfortable for him to put his hand there. So I can rely on that. I can rely on the fact that that's where the pelvis, the iliac crest, the top of the pelvis is happening. And then I'm going to look, I'm going to use my power of observation, exterior observation, to really think hard about what the outer edge of Russell's torso looks like against that black backdrop. So it's not just a curved line, okay? It's much more defined than that. It's definitely a curved line through the pectoral muscle down into the rib cage here. And as, as his body comes away from the rib cage, we move into his, his belly, and onto the shorts here. A big part of figure drawing is um, drawing what you see, and we'll talk about this endlessly in our workshop, but I really want everybody who goes after the figure to really uh, embrace the view that they have and understand that everyone's view is going to be a little bit different. So it's important to go after what you're actually seeing. start to get in a little bit of facial anatomy just to indicate. So I'm going to draw a center line here for the head, sort of the face. Um, we can see Russell's face is turned. So the center line is to my right. It's on, he's turned to his left. Uh, we have his nose is on that center line up into an eye here and the other eye is in this area. And I'm again being pretty rough uh, based on time. Um, not giving it I'm not getting myself too caught up in things. I just want to get the general gesture and structure of the overall pose. Like, so this is his standing leg and here in his standing leg, because he has all of his weight on that leg, we can really see definition in his quadricep, which is the, the muscle at the front of his thigh. And we can see the weight in his knee, the wrinkled skin on the, the surface of his knee tells me that he's got his weight on that leg. Okay. So I'm indicating that I want to show that pressure. I want to show that weight. So I'm looking at the little bit of fat that happens right above the knee, the, um, the quadricep intercepting into the behind the kneecap. Uh, again, we'll talk more about that in, this, in the uh, workshop. And here's his quad happening right above his knee and his back of his leg, back of his kneecap. And I'm looking at the very specific shapes into the calf muscle 
And now, again, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up or not, but we can see the bone of his femur right in here with the muscle um, behind, let me move my hand so the camera's picking up at this on the drawing, the muscle of his calf behind the bone of his femur back in here. This leg is offsetting the weight of his torso, leaning over. So we can see that if I draw a straight line through my drawing right down here, his weight is all on top of that leg. Even though he's a little shifted over here, we can feel the pressure of the downward pressure of his body at, by the shift of his torso to the side that everything is coming down onto this leg. So we're gonna talk in our workshop a lot about these vertical and horizontal plumb lines and understanding that feeling of balance. But what we're really gonna go after in this, in this workshop is um, identifying and representing the anatomical landmarks that present on the surface of the body. Again, sternal notch, clavicles, shoulder bones, elbows, um, iliac crest, kneecap. So <clears throat> um, these are the fundamentals for the workshop. I really hope that you're gonna be there. Um, we're gonna have a really fun time. We're gonna learn a lot about anatomy. It's one of my favorite subjects. It's when I think of figure drawing as the foundation for visual arts, anatomy is the foundation for figure drawing. And I think it's really important to have a good understanding of how it works to build a really solid drawing. So I hope I'll see you on the fifth.